Okay, hey, so if you clicked on this video, then you are very interested in the books that I read this year in 2022. Before this, like when I was in like elementary, middle school, I was a really big reader, reading all the time. And then when I got in high school, college, there just was not any time to read books. So I recently got back into it. So today we're going to be going through all the books that I read. And then I'm also going to be like looking at my phone because I literally have everything written on Goodreads. But before we get into that, I want to show y'all my Kindle. So this is the Kindle Paperwhite. I think it's the 2020 version. Whichever one just came out the most recently, that's the one that I have. I got mine from Target during a flash sale, and I think it ended up being like 40-ish dollars, but they have the same deal on Amazon a lot more frequently than they do at Target, so I would definitely recommend getting it from Amazon. I'm going to link it down in the description box, but this one is amazing. I got the one that doesn't have, like, Amazon is allowed to put ads on this one. All that means is that like for some people they can put the book that they're reading on their Kindle like it'll show as the cover but mine doesn't show as the cover it just shows as like whatever book that Amazon wants to show me at the time which is really annoying um but in the grand scheme of things it doesn't matter because most of the time my Kindle is inside this little sleeve um and it has like this little magnetic clasp I guess and it just works perfectly I literally just slide it in here. So let's talk about, oh, also I love the Kindle way more than I love reading like regular paper hardback books. I used to be a hardback girl, like I love reading a physical book, but then I realized how much faster you can read on a Kindle. And it's also a lot more convenient, it's a lot more snuggly, like you don't have to physically like turn the page and it gets really annoying. So I'm definitely a Kindle over like a physical book girl now. And I also have the Kindle Amazon app on my phone, so if I don't have my Kindle, my Kindle died. Whatever the case may be, I always have my book with me, which is a lot more convenient than lugging around a big bulky book because a lot of the time the books that I read are like 700 to 800 pages, so they take up a lot of space. So it's just a lot more convenient to have something slim like this or to just have my phone, which I have with me anyway. Um, but I definitely do recommend getting the Amazon like Kindle app on your phone. It's only about like nine, I think it's like $9.99 a month. And with that, you get access to the entire Amazon Kindle library. A lot of the times the books that you download will be free for Amazon users. Like a lot of the Colleen Hoover books are free. Um, I recently read the Akatar series. Those weren't free, but they were significantly cheaper than if I were to buy the physical book. So like all in all, yes, the Kindle may be a little bit expensive if you buy it and it's not on sale, but at the end of the day, it's a, still a lot cheaper than buying a physical book. So hands down, I'm a Kindle girl all the way. So let's go through all of the books that I read this year and also what I think of them. Also, if you're just not getting into reading, you have no idea where to start, you have no idea where to get your inspiration from, I definitely recommend downloading Goodreads. This is what the app icon looks like. It is amazing. It is pretty much like you can see all your friends, like the books they're reading, their updates on the book, um, their status posts on like their favorite chapter, what's going on, their feelings about it. People also post really good reviews about books and it helps you to know like whether or not you'll like it because they'll compare it to other books. Sometimes they have spoils, but spoilers, <laughs> but if they do have spoilers, then like Goodreads automatically filters it so that you won't see it as soon as you click on it. So Goodreads is amazing. I will have mine linked in the description box in case y'all want to follow along with all the things that I'm reading. Okay, so I'm going to be using my phone to help me remember which books I read this year in what order. So the first book that got me kind of out of my almost decade long reading hiatus was The Silent Patient by Alex Mycleides. Don't know if I'm saying it right. This is what the book looks like. And it was a very good like psycho thriller. And it's one of those books where you're like, this book, it feels like it's going nowhere. I feel like you're just feeding me information that I don't necessarily need. But every single piece of information that they put in this book is so vitally important, but you don't realize it until the very, very, very end. I remember exactly where I was when I was reading this book. I was in the Seattle airport waiting for my Dallas flight. And after I finished the book, I just I just had to sit down and stare off in the space. And then I remember putting my head between my legs because I was like, there's no way that literally just happened. It was a very good book. And when it comes to rating books, I'm a very like all or nothing kind of person. So I gave this book a five stars because I felt like that is what it deserved. It didn't deserve five stars like when I was reading it initially because I was like, oh my God, this is so boring. But when I got to the end, I was like, oh, definitely a five star read. Then after that, I read Where the Crawdads Sing. I know the movie just came out on Netflix, but if I'm being honest, I did not like this book. It was not engaging in the beginning or the middle or the end. Like no part of this book was engaging to me. And it was also very hard to read in the beginning because I feel like the author was trying to be very like colloquial and I just really didn't like it. And then after doing more background research on the author herself, I really didn't like it. Um, it's just kind of like 
one of those books to like give an excuse to be like higher than thou like racially rude and inconsiderate i just didn't like it i didn't like the book i didn't like the movie the movie was not a good portrayal of the book just zero like if i could have given it zero stars i would have definitely given it zero stars and i know it's going to be controversial but the book was not good the book was it wasn't good and it's kind of like a backwoods by you like a girl like her family abandons her and like everybody leaves her and there's like this whole murder trial kind of whodunit type book and normally under normal circumstances i would love that but it was so dry and boring and not all exciting i just really didn't like it so that would definitely get a zero stars if zero stars was an option now the, the book that just got me out of that was song of achilles this is one of those book talk books that you see everywhere like you look up book talk whatever 2022 this is one of the books that you're gonna see and it's it's amazing oh, oh my god it's literally so 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 amazing um it is like very greek mythology not even modern because it's like very in time but it was amazing it was an lgbtq love story and it was beautiful and was brilliant and i love the way that it was written and i'm not a huge action person but the action to romance ratio which is perfect. This book is a five star review out of me. And if I could read this book over again with fresh eyes, I would read it again. It was absolutely amazing. It was one of those books where it's like, I just can't put it down because I need to know what happens yet. And it's it's like beautiful and it's heartbreaking and it's amazing. And oh, oh my God, literally five stars. Then I started reading The Inheritance Games. It's a series, but I never read any of the other books. Um, the first one, it's very like mind gamey. And it's kind of like figuring out like there's this girl who like nobody knows who she is and now she like gets sucked into this game to see who inherits the fortune of like this multi-millionaire and like the family hates her and she doesn't know why they hate her because she doesn't even want to be here in the first place and it's like all those things um it was interesting but would i recommend somebody to read it probably not probably not if i'm being honest i think i still gave it like a four or five stars let's see what i gave it i gave it four stars see it, it wasn't that great it wasn't that great then after that, I read A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. If you liked Pretty Little Liars, I really, really, really think that you would like this book because it's it's literally the same. It's the same concept, but like different characters, different town, like different little like small scenarios, different little cliques. I really liked it. I will definitely, I'm pretty sure I gave this book a five star review. I'm pretty sure. And it's one of those books where you're like, that, that did not just happen that literally did not just happen i don't know what i'm reading this is crazy i have to put my book down and have to walk away from it and it's it's kind of like you think you know what's going on you think you know who did it and then it's never the person who you thought did. like it's it's literally so crazy definitely five stars for that book because it was awesome then i read the invisible life of Addie larue again it's kind of one of those books where it's like i don't really know why you're telling me what you're telling me it wasn't very memorable to me oh no this is the book where the girl like she's trying to run away from like this arranged marriage and like she's praying to the gods that she can just like live another life like be somebody else where nobody remembers who she is and she gets her wish nobody remembers who she is she can go up to somebody say like hi like i'm this person and they're literally gonna forget about her and so then she meets up with like i feel like the personification of like hades or the devil or whatever and they have like this meeting day every year it's actually it was kind of good it the book should have been shorter because I feel like a lot of the times we were dragging, but the book was good. I'm pretty sure I gave this book four stars. It wasn't a book that I was just like, oh my gosh, I have to eat this up in one sitting. But it, it like, it's one of those books where you just have to think about what's happening and like why it's happening, if that makes sense. But I gave this book a four star as well. So like memorable, but eh, kind of not memorable. Then I read All Your Perfects by Colleen Hoover. Girl, it was very like oh this is a toxic relationship and like this is what their toxic relationship is like and oh they fall in love at the end again it was very boring and it was a waste of my time and honestly the only reason that i read it is because i was trying to hurry up and get to my reading goal before nursing school started again it, it just wasn't good i'm pretty sure i gave it why did i give it five stars i literally didn't even like it i'm so sorry that's literally a lie i didn't like that book um and then i read november the 9th november the 9th was very predictable very very predictable it's a book about these two people that meet on November the 9th and then she has to go and he has to go and they make this pact to meet every year back at this little diner or whatever on November the 9th and no strings attached kind of relationship thing and it's just very very predictable 
it's just very predictable do i think you should read it i think yes i think you should read it i feel like it's still a good book but it's just very predictable which is not bad but you know whatever and then i read malibu rising by taylor jenkins reed and it was a waste of my time sorry again it was very predictable oh but okay I, I don't even know why this isn't on here a book that i definitely recommend that you read if you don't read anything else that i'm telling you a book that you just absolutely have to read the seven husbands of evelyn hugo if you are on book talk if you are new to book talk you don't even know where to start you don't know what book is going to get you out of your reading slump the answer is the seven husbands of evelyn hugo that book is everything that you need it to be there is romance and there's drama and it's like old 1950s 60s hollywood like turn like current modern like looking back on it is literally the craziest book I've ever read. Well, not the craziest book, but it is like it gets 10 stars. I literally did, do not have a single fault with that book. It was amazing and it was such an easy read. And I recommended it to my sister who was like getting new, getting into reading. She read it in one day. She read it like less than 24 hours, probably 12 hours. She had the entire book read because it was that good. I'm saying that now because I had the same like very high expectations for Malibu Rising, which is written by the same person. Taylor Jenkins Reid. One of the seven husbands, it's kind of like a spinoff for like one of the seven husbands, um, like his life. But like Evelyn is only mentioned on like literally one page, but it's like his life and his rise to stardom and his kids and how his kids interact. It was, again, predictable, kind of boring. Um, and then I read Good Girl, Bad Blood, which is the second book to A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. Awesome literally awesome it's another like who done it kind of thing it was amazing i really did like it if you're into like more not like kitty kitty young adult books but like obviously like not colleen hoover like a few levels below colleen hoover and you're interested in like murder mystery i definitely recommend reading that book because again it was very very good and it got five stars for me then i read regretting you by colleen hoover honestly i don't even remember what this book was about her books are just not very oh this is the, the mom daughter i hate you book um again just like not very memorable um the mom is pretty much mad because she didn't get to live her life because she got pregnant too young and so now she's like super hard on her daughter and her daughter's like I, I it's not fair for me to pay for your mistakes um so yeah it's just kind of actually there was a part of this book where i was like oh my gosh is this getting a little bit and it was and it was very very interesting but like the thing that you want to happen in the book doesn't happen so it's just kind of like, ugh. It's very like push and shove back and forth. Like you just want one of the main characters to do this thing and they pretend like they're going to do it and they don't do it. So mm, it got like a four star review for me because I just didn't think it was that good. And then I absolutely wasted my time by reading Full Tilt by Emma Scott and it was, again, very predictable. And the thing about it, I know that I'm saying a lot of these books are very predictable, but you have to read like a wide genre of books in order to figure out what you like and how you like it. And it just took me a while to figure out what I liked and how I liked it, which I feel like that's fine. I feel like that's a part of like growing as a reader. You have to try something in order to figure out that you don't like it or try it in order to figure out that you love it. Um, so then I read Things We Never Got Over. This book was good. This book was very, very good. On the red hot chili pepper scale, if we're going out of a 10, this one was like a seven and a half, eight. It was very, 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 very good. I really like this book. It only took me about a week to read it, but it's kind of like small town drama and like a, a what is it? A, what's that trope called? A enemies to lovers trope. It was very, very, very good. Like, it's one of those books that caught me from, like, the first page. So I really like that. Um, and then I read Heartbones. Heartbones was cute, like, young, lovery, romantic kind of book. Um, again, I definitely do think that you should read it. Like, it wasn't a bad book at all. I'm pretty sure I gave it five stars. I did. I gave it five stars. Um, but it's, it's very cute. Oh, my gosh, no. This is the book that takes place on the beach. I really, really, really liked it. It could have been predictable had I been paying more attention, but I wasn't paying more attention and I'm thankful for that because it was just very sweet, like a very unexpected love romance that takes place on the beach and it's like that summer fling, that summer love, like new like family, like step parents, blended family type situation. I'm saying a lot of words, but I'm telling you, like it's definitely, definitely, definitely worth the read. 
Um, and I gave it five stars because it was really, really, really good. I really liked it. Then, y'all, here come the books that changed my life. This is when I got my Kindle and I was reading books like books were going out of style. I started reading the Akatar series. The first book in the Akatar series is A Court of Thorns and Roses. The thing about Sarah J. Mass is that she is going to take 200 pages to get to the point. But once she gets to the point, she is going to be blowing your mind with every single chapter. Because I remember telling one of my coworkers, I was like, literally, why is this girl riding on a horse into freaking Narnia? Like, this book is so boring. Like, I don't want to read it anymore. And she was like, you, you don't, you don't want to read it. What do you say? Literally, what are you saying? I am so glad that she pushed me to keep reading this book because it is hands down the best book series I have ever read in my entire life. And I would recommend it to anybody. But if you're in a book slump, don't read, don't read this series first because she literally takes 200 pages to get to the point. Don't read this first. Read something like um, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo first to kind of like build up your reading palette again. But when you're ready, when you are ready, please go back to this book and i didn't think i would like like fantasy kind of books i do i do <sighs> this book was crazy like once you get to the to like past and it's literally like 200 pages to the page things start literally getting crazy and the second book this and, and let me just say all of her books get five stars for me i i find no faults in any of her books i love her writing style everything um, a Court of Mist and Fury, I don't even remember what chapter it is. I think it's like chapter 30 or 40. I just got off a 12 hour night shift. I had been literally reading all night. I sat in my car because I had to finish it. And I screamed and screamed and screamed because this book, the tension, the person that you think that you're gonna hate when you read A Court of Thorns and Roses ends up being the person that you are going to absolutely love the most. And it is like the most, mind-boggling experience and the person that you think you love the person that you think you love in a court of thorns and roses you're gonna hate them every time they come in you're gonna be like oh my god not this person again not this person again i literally hate them i hate them i hate everything about them it's one of those books amazing if i'm really thinking about it the second book in the akatar series is probably my favorite it was the most drama filled the most crazy the most action-packed and on a level of like the if we're talking you know red hot chili pepper level an easy 15 an easy 15. if we're going out of 10 it's a 15. the book is crazy but she makes you she makes you wait for everything and then the way she just like explains things and describes things she's what i needed she is literally what i needed to break me out of this uh not memorable not memorable not memorable slump i remember everything i remember everything from all of her, her books so a court of mist and fury five star that's the second book a court of thorns and roses the first book five stars easy a court of wings and ruin loved it amazing and then a court of frost and starlight um it's people call it the christmas book you can skip over it if you want to but like there are little small important details that you need in order to finish the final book which is a court of silver flames now, the last book in the Avatar series, I thought I was going to hate it because one of my least favorite characters is the main character. And it, 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 oh, it just made me so mad. But it's one of those books where you grow to love the person that you hated so bad. You grow to love them and like you learn about them and you learn about why the way they are. And then it's like a different vantage point of the love interest that you've been seeing for the past three books and now all of a sudden you're seeing like a different relationship with new people who like you don't really know but you are kind of like getting to know and then red hot chili pepper level a 10 a 10 it was very 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 good um so yeah if you are thinking about reading the avatar series you've seen it you're interested in reading it definitely do recommend reading it like i said i read it a lot faster on kindle than i feel like i would a regular book because these books i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and warn you these books are like 700 pages in length now i love a thick book i absolutely do love a thick book but i feel like 
it's more it's a lot easier to pick up my kindle and not think about the fact like oh my gosh i literally have this much of the book left and i've been reading for an hour and i've only gotten this much like i feel like a kindle is great for that i will say if you do have the kindle membership that you do have to pay for these books but it's significantly cheaper than if you were to buy like the regular paperback hardback whatever so it's really really convenient in that aspect now the book that i recently started reading or the the series that i recently started reading was the ravenhood series the first thing i heard about this book or this series is that it's very very good but do not read the second book in public i was like what does that mean like is it dirty like should i be like covering my like you know and they were like mm -mm. and nobody would literally tell me nobody would say anything else to me about it they were like just whatever you do do not read this book in public so i was like okay so i read the first book like literally a few days ago chapter 16 and chapter 26 what's going on what's going on you get to chapter 16 and you're just like oh 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 okay and then you get to chapter like i, th I think it's 24 or 26 and you're just like what is happening like i remember sitting on the couch and i was like what is happening what is happening what is happening and my sister was like what is what is wrong with you you are losing your mind what is literally wrong with you and i was like i i can't i cannot even Y'all, my face is getting hot just even thinking about it. That book is crazy. The book is crazy. It follows this girl who she like moves to this new town. Her dad has been very absent in her life and now he wants her to like come and work at this factory. She meets this boy on the first day of like factory orientation. They start hanging out, it's all well and good. He invites her to like back to his house with like all of his friends. Um, and of course there's this one guy that literally hates her he's staring her down he's being mean saying mean things to her and then craziness starts to happen i can't i literally can't explain anything else to you besides that but just believe me when i say that it is literally crazy red hot chili pepper level 1000 description just throughout the whole just throughout the whole book very very good 10,000 now i'm reading the second book i i was literally reading the part that people say don't read in public i was reading it riding home from seattle well not from seattle but like riding to the mall it, it literally doesn't matter where i'm going anyway i was reading it in the car we had like a 25 minute car ride and i was just like reading like i didn't think that this was going to be the part that i was supposed to read in public it felt like my heart was break and i i literally want to cry right now even thinking about it it felt like my heart was breaking into a thousand million billion pieces it like i'm still not over it like i still haven't even given myself the chance to process it because i've been like out and like with people all day it is the most heartbreak that i have ever felt for a book in my entire life and i'm usually not somebody that gets like very wrapped up but it was crazy Oh my gosh, I literally forgot about one of the most important books. My camera battery is literally about to die, but I have to come back and tell you all this. You have to read Verity. So in the order of books that you absolutely have to read, you have to read Verity, you have to read Ugly Love, Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, um, what's the other one? Song of Achilles, and then you have to read the Akatar series. Those are the five books that you absolutely have to read, or I'm going to come for you. Okay, I love you, bye. But yeah, those are all the books that I think you should read. I also do highly, highly, highly recommend getting the Kindle. Again, I have the Kindle Paperwhite. This is what it looks like up close. Super, super lightweight, not very heavy at all. I really, really hope that y'all enjoyed my 2022 version of Wrapped for the books that I read. If y'all have any recommendations, please, please, please leave them in the description below and I'll see y'all later. Bye.